Hello and welcome to another special edition of Marty's Matchbox Makeovers. Today I'm doing this Super King K16, a Dodge tractor. It's got 26 wheels. It's the Frauhof Tandem Tipper Combination and it was introduced in 1966. This particular model was donated by K Stone from Emerald in Victoria, Australia. And I thank you K Stone Ken, I think it might be, can't be sure. If it is, or if it is not, please correct me. Without further ado, I'd like to kick on with this one and get it done and out of the way, as this is a mega makeover. So let's look at this model that uh, K Stone from Emerald Australia donated. Okay, whoever had it before him, or maybe it was him as a child, they have painted it with this awful green paint and blue paint all over. It's got a couple of hydra sleeve like jacks there that hold the tipper body up in any position and they seem to be working well for 50 year old components. You can just see under there K16 Frau Half Tipper or something similar. Now having a look at this, the cabin's been painted with this thick blue paint the transparency there, the windscreen's all stuffed up, and the exhausts and the uh, air intakes there are bent. The air intake's bent backwards and the exhaust is bent forwards. The rear trailer's been painted a different green. It's like a metallic green out of a spray can or something. Again, the hydra sleeves operate quite well, and this trailer um, combination here this rear trailer has a set of bogies on the front there. See that? That swivels independently and it has this towing arm out the front. So I can see a lot of potential in this model. It's going to look great when it's done up and I can't wait to see it finished. So first up I'm going to take off all of the 26 tyres but in actual fact in this instance there's only 25 as one of them was missing. Can you believe that? The draw bar there pulls out quite quickly, easily. Just flex it and it comes out. Now to paint this body I've got to disassemble it and I've got to take off every one of these wheel hubs which is very time consuming. Which is why this video is longer than normal because this is like two models in one. As you can see that blue paint has penetrated all of the spaces that it could has gone in between the tires and the wheel hubs there and it means that I've now got to clean the wheel hubs as well as everything else. So I'm using my Dremel with the grindstone there to take off that burr on the end of the axle and pull these tires off. I'm only removing the minimum amount of material so that it's easier for me to refit the wheels at the end of the day. Because the more material I remove, the more I have to make. I'm struggling here to get these wheel hubs off the axles because there's a little bit of corrosion and obviously age has made them stick to the object that they're next to. So I've drilled a hole in these set of pliers that I've got and it's just slightly larger than the axle. And I think it's going to make my job easier today by just pushing down like that and pulling these wheel hubs off rather than trying to wiggle them out with the pliers and possibly damaging them. I've painted those special axle pliers blue so I can recognise them in the future. To remove this tipper body here I've got to take out this hinge pin on the back. Now there's not much deformation on the end of it and I actually suspect because I've done a few of these things in the past I feel I can pull it out without modifying it and you know what I was right it came out a little bit it was a bit of an effort but it came out nonetheless and I didn't have to modify it in any way. Now I'm just showing you there that the hinge pin is shorter than the axles so I don't get them mixed up when I'm putting it back together. These hydra sleeves just pull apart easily once that hinge pin is removed. And it's a great design here by Matchbox in that the silver component here has a kind of, not too sure what you'd call that, a cam lobe or something on there. 
And once it's in that hole, it cannot be removed unless the rear tipper body is almost vertical and that can only be a, uh, that can only occur when the rear hinge pin is removed so no kid would be presented with a choking hazard for example unless their dad removed the hinge pin i don't want to pull this part apart but to achieve 100 percent paint coverage i have to drill out this rivet and separate the bogey from the trailer so the hydro sleeve i've removed on the trailer is exactly the same as the hydro sleeve on the trailer. Now I'm pulling apart the main body. Same deal here. There's a hinge pin that has not got a lot of material there holding it into position and I use my spring-loaded center punch just to punch that out and it works quite well. I've used it in the past and I'm getting to use it more and more often. Now to remove these tailgates I have to flex the body so that the hinge pin points will slip out of the holes that they're engaged in so I just do that there it just fell out and because I've got those rubber tips on those long nose pliers there's no damage to the model this is the second time I've used this technique and it works quite well Now I've got these soft rubber magnetized vice clamps to put in there and they help to protect the model when I crush it up. That's not quite right there so I drop it down a little bit there. I've got to drill that rivet out, see, to, um, to remove that bogey assembly from the rear trailer. That way I can paint it and it will ha I will have 100% coverage. And then I can put it back together at the end and it will look like a brand new model, hopefully. Now, once again, I've removed the minimum amount of material using that drill. That way it's easier to put it back together again, believe it or not. So I'm very mindful that I could break this skeletal structure here. And I use a wide bladed screwdriver, flat bladed screwdriver, to tease it apart. And there is minimal damage to the model. I'm leaving that rivet in because if I pull it out, I've only given myself extra work to put it back in again. This assembly is also held together by the same type of rivet. So once again, I drill that out again and separating it with that rather large flat bladed screwdriver. Now I want to get that windscreen out so I can clean it and also those exhaust stacks and air intakes. This model has a base plate on it. And again, I've got to drill out those rivets to pull it apart. Now, I thought, I'd, I thought that there was only the one rivet on this assembly because I wasn't paying attention. This is the first king size I've done. And normally the models have only one rivet. This also has this plastic, I think it's a suspension uh, device there that activates on the front and rear, uh, mid-rear axles only. I tried to separate this and it's a little bit awkward. And I think, oh, hang on, maybe I should prise it apart here at the door. Then for the first time I realized because this is a king size, it's held together with two rivets instead of one which is normal, which is what I'm familiar with. So after removing the second rivet, it comes apart quite easily. And that suspension plate there falls out on its own accord. Now looking at this here, there's some parts in here they're silver plated or silver metal you've got the air intakes and the exhaust stack this piece is in one piece there's no damage there thank goodness that's that suspension plastic piece that I was talking about before and that only operates on two of the axles the, the cab has three axles but it only operates on two of them this part here just drops out quite easily. I thought I'd struggle with that because the amount of paint on it. 
but it is misshapen it's bent and also it's out of alignment like uh, fore and aft you'll see what I mean later this exhaust stack is stuck in there with some paint and I'm thinking I'm going to flick this across the room and lose sight of it any second but it actually comes out and just lands right next to me there so you can see that's a little bit bent also I'm going to have to straighten that out I want to remove this windscreen and that's held in with that rivet there which is actually the bottom of the air horns that are on the roof so I'm using this uh, shallow drill that I made as a very shallow cut that way I don't drill through the roof and it just takes away once again the minimum amount of material and hopefully I can just pop this windscreen out but in the past I've been surprised at how how adhesive the paint can be and how reluctant these transparencies can be the windscreen assembly can be to remove because they get glued in by the paint and I'm expecting the worst I'm using a flat bladed screwdriver to prise out the windscreen and it just falls out all I did was touch it and it fell out which is a first for me now looking at it here I'm a little bit disappointed there's a lot of paint on it it's a little bit faded and it's got a crack a massive crack right down the middle of it see that so I'm going to order a new part for this model and I'm not expecting it here anytime soon so I'm going to have to come up with a solution so I can put this video out this weekend I've removed the air horns off the top there with that small flat bladed screwdriver and here are all of the parts that are ready for paint stripping now I've done this before I've put plastic parts in brake fluid before now and it works really well on some paints more often than not now in this instance I was rather disappointed because the blue paint was was resistant to uh, to the paint stripper anyway before I get back to that I'm just going to immerse all these metal axles and the tow hook in some white vinegar to try and remove some of the corrosion although it's minimal it's doing something for me in the background whilst I'm concentrating on other things so I just left those in a bath of vinegar now this is an hour later and I am straining all the brake fluid off of these plastic parts and to my disappointment this transparency has gone completely opaque it's uh, after dropping it onto the table I realized it was extremely brittle and it snapped in half so I am absolutely really gutted at this point because I wanted this video out by tonight and I'm going to have to come up with a solution because that uh, replacement windscreen is not going to be here anytime soon also I'm rather surprised that this blue paint has not been affected at all by the brake fluid so I'm gonna to have to try something else now in the past I've used Dettol to remove paint from plastic parts so I thought okay the brake fluid didn't work so I'm gonna use some Dettol so now I set all those parts aside again for another hour in the meantime I'm pondering on how I can make a replacement windscreen so I wrap the original windscreen in some of this masking tape and I mark it with a fine marker in the hope that I can make a template to cut out of some clear plastic sheet and create a temporary windscreen after I've laid out the plan of the windscreen I now get this this clear plastic sheet that I bought from the local hobby shop after I've made the masking tape template I lay it out onto the plastic sheet and then I cut it out with some scissors it took me like 15 20 minutes to get it right these are the ones that failed before they're not quite right won't fit in the cabin so I set those aside and this is the one that I went with 
It's wrapped around on the inside there. It doesn't fit exactly at the front. But you know what? It looks quite good considering uh, what could be there, i.e. nothing. So this is better than nothing and I'm going to run with it. Now this suspension piece here was also covered in blue paint. Don't know how, it's on the inside of the model. Anyway, I scrape it off with the aid of a razor blade and some uh, Dettol. That blue paint is still resisting. So the blue paint won't come off even with the razor blade and the Dettol. So I'm going to have to try something different. I went out and I bought this ultrasonic cleaner. It's a 50 watt version. I've seen some modelers use these in the past and I thought I'm going to get one sooner or later. Now's a good good enough time as any. I need to check it out and see if it works. Now miraculously all these parts were separate when I put them in the brake fluid initially and they have joined back together again which just blew me away. So once again after I separated them I put in some of this cleaning solution and set this up for the maximum duration which is seven and a half minutes and I actually had to do it like five times before I was happy with the result I will show you that in a minute there's that plastic suspension piece that came clean before I strip this model I have to mix up the matching paint to respray it so at the moment I've got these original paint samples there on the model to use as a guide As usual, I'm using some water-based acrylic paints and I'm using these stirrers that were supplied by Ken Motts from Rio Verde in Arizona. And if you watch one of my uh, earlier unboxing videos, you will see I was totally taken aback by what Ken had sent me. He was most generous. So I'm using some of his things here. I'm mixing up this matching paint using the Mr. Hobby paint supply and I'm adding a few drops of black into this bright green. And I'm hoping to dull it down to a color that is reminiscent of the original. Uh, I think I may need to add a couple of extra drops here. And at this stage I think Hmm, maybe I've overdone it and I need to actually lighten it up. Smear it around with a cotton bud there, it still doesn't look any better. So, having darkened it, I've now got to lighten it. Which is strange because I'm actually lightening, in a, lightening a different colour to what I had before. And if I'd lightened it initially, it probably wouldn't have worked. But in this instance, a few drops of white into the darkened green. And it actually works. It makes a really good match for the original paint. Have a look at that. Fairly close, I feel. So I'm happy with that. And I seal up the paint sample there with another shot glass and some tape. And then it's ready for me to use tomorrow or the next day when I respray the model. Now for the yellow. The yellow out of the can is fairly close. But it's, the actual original colour is not 100% yellow. It's a little bit orange. So I just need to put couple of drops of red and black in there to dull it down and make it a little bit of a dull orange. Dilute it with some thinners as I go. Mixing it up. Here we go. Mr. Hobby 327 red there. Now I'm just adding a couple of drops of red to warm up the yellow a little bit.
One drop didn't do it, so I add a couple more, and there we have the perfect orange color, or just warm yellow, you could call it. It's a warm yellow color, and I set that aside for use when it comes to painting. So now I've mixed the paint up and matched it, I can now strip all the old paint off. Confident that I have the knowledge to repaint it in its original colours. I'm using the Poly Stripper Paint Stripper here. One of my favourite products. Here I can just show you the original stickers that have been overpainted there by the previous owner. Or one of its previous owners. Disappointing, I mean, if you saw those stickers there, would you really paint them over? Personally, I wouldn't, but then again, I'm not a six-year-old kid, I guess. Very complicated model. A lot of framework, corners and bits and pieces there. Difficult to get 100% coverage. There's one of those stickers that's come off. So after I've applied the paint stripper, I put them into my laundry sink and scrub them clean under boiling water or near to. That's why I've got those gloves on. And you can see there's absolutely no paint on there whatsoever at the end of the process. Now as a precaution, because I've been burnt before, I'm just washing them off with some detergent so there is no residue left behind when I come to paint them. Now back to the ultrasonic cleaner. I'm just looking in there and this, I'm optimistic here. There's a lot of blue paint flakes in the bottom. So I strain them and rinse them. Notice I've got my plug in there because I don't want to drop anything down the plug hole. And you can see most of the blue paint has been removed. Finally, I have a win. Look at that. It's just one tiny little chip on there that will rub off in my thumbnail. There's those hydro sleeve plastic parts. They come beautifully clean. And the wheel hubs look magnificent. There's not a skerrick of blue paint left on those. So these are all ready to put back together when the time comes. Now here's a shot of all the parts that have been paint stripped and before I paint them I'm going to give them all a coat of this Tamiya Fine Grey Primer. I'm speeding this up because this took quite a while to do and I don't want to bore you. Now luckily I got all those magnetic clamps donated in my one of my earlier unboxings and I've I've used practically every one today with all these multiple parts drying in the spray booth. Here's those silver axles that have been soaking overnight in the white vinegar. They're not bad, but I'm just jazzing them up a little bit with this bronze wool. And they came up quite clean. Look at that. No extra attention to detail required there. Although, me being me, I use a bit of Brasso on the, the draw bar there. And a little bit of bronze wool again. Just trying to polish it up, make it look pretty special. Probably what it looked like when it was new. Turned out not too bad. So the undercoat's dry, and this is the next day. And I'm trialling out my paint samples that I made the day before. The paint I mixed up the day before. Going on quite fine, looking, looking good. I'm quite excited by this because I can see this model. It's going to look a million dollars when it's finished. Now surprisingly this yellow in the video here looks quite bright. But in reality it's quite dull and very, very... 1960s I guess you'd say because that's when it came out. All colours in those days seem to be duller and I think maybe paint technology may have progressed over the years and now we have brighter colours, more vibrant colours and they simply didn't exist in the day and that's why I'm always having to dumb these colours down. 
the colours off the shelf that I get, they seem always too bright. So here's all the major components that have been resprayed, and I'm just leaving them another 24 hours to harden. Here I've drilled and tapped the posts on the cabin so I can reassemble it with these 2M screws as per my other videos. And here I have installed the homemade windscreen which will suffice until I get my replica part from my online supplier. Now putting this back together with that rivet, all I'm doing is flaring the end using the shank from this pop rivet. I get another person to hold the model for me over a drift that is clamped in my vise and I just belt it with a hammer and flare it over and it's held into position. I put that plastic suspension piece back in and I turn it over so it's upside down to what it was. That way it's got a little bit more springiness in it. Now before I put these axles back in I'm comparing the lengths and I notice there's one odd one there that's shorter than the others. Using logic I assume that that short one is for the cabin, the front wheels of the cabin. So I use it for that. And here I am putting the wheels back on and then I'm going to take them out to my shed and flatten the end of that axle using this drill press and a modified nail and stop those wheels from falling off. And I'm always nervous now because I can, I can either drop this model, it can fly off the vise, it can bounce around the floor, the wheels can shoot off and get lost. It's happened many times in the past, believe me. And it's always a lot of anxiety involved when I'm doing this. Uh, I just have to go slow and methodically and make it happen. And, and that's what I do here. Now I've just got this, uh, the rear trailer to do. Once again, I hold the axle, as you can see, with these pliers to prevent it spinning whilst I'm crushing the end down with the drill press there. It works quite well. And those red hubcaps, I've always got a good side and a bad side. I always have the good side facing out. Now here's those air cleaners. You can see they're twisted and bent. Now, I'm going to risk ruining everything here. I'm just going to put this very light metal item over the, the gas on my stove and try straightening it. I'm really scared I'm going to wreck everything right here, but here's the exhaust stack and that tab on the bottom was twisted. I just heat it up for a half a minute and it comes out really good. No damage there. I figure if I did it when it was cold it might break or snap. So that's why I heated it up and it seemed to work quite well. Now I'm reassembling the model now. I'm putting those hydro sleeves back together. And the black pit just clips in the bottom there and it can't come out once this is all back together. It's impossible for it to be removed because of the angles of the back and the angles of the rams and the fact that the hole that they sit in is not a complete hole. It's three quarters of a hole. Now to hold it all into position I'll use this the rear pin there. Remember the short ones? When I compared the axles, there was a couple of short ones there. And I peen those over using a punch and hammer. And after it's all back together, this is what it looks like. And I'm just testing out those rams on the hydro sleeve there. And they work really well. They're very strong. They're very firm for such an old model. They haven't worn at all. Those horns there, I managed to manipulate them using some long nose pliers to make them look like new again by reshaping the, the, the bell housing there on the horns. That was another nerve-wracking moment. 
And here I am putting the air cleaners and exhausts back in. They just slot into those slots on the model. And they look quite good because I've straightened them up. Now remember I said I flipped that over so that instead of it being the ends pointing up, the ends are now pointing down and that gives a little bit more suspension effect to the wheels and makes it probably like it was when it was new. I'm putting those 2M screws in there to hold it all together. Now remember I was one tyre missing? Well, somebody generously donated a bag of tyres a while ago and I've got all sorts of tyres now and lo and behold I find one exact match an exact matching tyre in that box of tyres so another problem solved now one more problem here how to get the back in without damaging this freshly painted model while well, using my rubber tipped long nose pliers again I prise the sides of the tipper body out and just drop that in. Now I've printed these decals out on white decal paper on my printer. I'm now taping it to this piece of card so I can spray it with some top coat without it flying around everywhere. And now I'm giving them a coat of Tamiya varnish in my spray booth. And then tomorrow morning I will cut them out, I will make them fit and hopefully they will look like the original decals. Give a nice thick coat of varnish. That prevents the ink from bleeding tomorrow when I dip them in water to apply them. So here I am the next day and there's an interesting optical illusion here. I thought that these stickers were different sizes, but it's all to do with the length of the model and they are in actual fact the exact same length. So that makes it easier for me because I've made this little template here on the cardboard and I'm marking these up to cut them out, cutting them all out identically and this is a test fit to see what they will look like when they're placed on the model. Well, I think they're going to look pretty good. So I just drop this water slide decal paper into the water. And whilst it's soaking, I put a little bit of moisture on the model. Only a minute later, the backing paper is free to be removed. Just drag it out of the way with tweezers like that. Use some kitchen paper squares just to dab away any excess moisture and lo and behold I've got a win that looks pretty good so I've just got to repeat that now four times or three more times this one had a bit of a crease in it which was a concern but I managed to smooth it out by rolling it out with a cotton bud there and again with the paper towel I'm just dabbing away any excess moisture the bottom, bottom edge there was a bit tricky, but I made it work. The only finishing touches on the original model were the headlights and the front bumper bar were painted silver. Now the silver in those days was rather dull. I do have a chrome pen, but today I'm using a very dull silver to make it look just like the original. That's my whole aim. So now here's a reminder of what I started with. And this is what it looks like now. I think you'll agree, this model has been absolutely transformed. So I got this model, I stripped it down, I repainted it, I gave it a new lease of life. And now, I hope you'll agree, I've made it look factory fresh and as it did when it was first given out as a Christmas or a birthday present to some deserving child back in the 1960s. 1966 this first came out, so who knows, some kid who got this would have been five, six, seven or eight and he would have absolutely loved it.
This Matchbox Super King K16 Dodge Tractor was one of Matchbox's best selling king size models of its time and I think you can see why. It's an absolutely beautiful model. I hope you've enjoyed this episode of Marty's Matchbox Makeover. Please like, share and subscribe and I will see you again next week. Until then, goodbye. Oh! That's <laughs> what out! What the hell? It's done f all! Another season just f decent ratings and they might. It needs to move this way. It needs to move. And it's not moving. Doesn't want to move. Doesn't want to move. It doesn't want to move. How has that even happened? Okay. Ruined. No. Second failure. Not in the bar of that either. Alright. Down to my last one.